going back to to Fligo, the business itself. So, you know, guys, super young, very ambitious. You know, you said, hey, I want to play in the most competitive league in the world and I want to win a ring, right? And I want to win a championship. So, uh, and you're working on the B2C app. And then at that time, you you raised some money, right? Yeah, we raised some money. We ra- how much did you raise no. and how was that process? It was 350K, which was like, like we had a commitment from a Cordova VC that they wanted to lead the round. And they, they had to sign. They said that they, they wanted to negotiate evaluation. The day they had to sign, you know, like one of the worst practices, you know. And we said no. And we had like a little bit of cash, but luckily things happened. And the next day, two investors appeared from nothing, decided to invest in us. And we raised like from some investors in San Francisco, 350K. Two weeks later, Facebook like tells us before they announced it that they were going to close the the data access to your friends' information. So our company was dead. You know? the gifting product was dead. Like we did, like so we kind of that's all, all in a week, right? So you lose the round, then you reclose the round of San Francisco investors, mm-hmm. and then the entire ape, like the only ape data access that you need to build your entire business is gone. It's gone. So we decided to, to instead of doing it for like product recommendations for someone else, we said, okay, let's create an app that recommends based on Facebook or Twitter data. They recommend content, products, events, and entertainment videos for yourself and that kind of worked uh, you know we were able to raise more money that app was the number one app the one number one in the app store and the android store the play store for a couple of months in, in the entertainment category uh, we were a- acquiring great. users and like, we were like that that gave us some validation because it was at that moment where people thought that social media was going to this um aggregation model and that actually the different social media websites they weren't as competitive with each other as they are today so there weren't that many people on the internet right so users i think everyone they were more comfortable with the cross-pollination of users um apis you could abuse apis way better in a way you know it was, crazy. <laughs> it was a different era it was a different era <laughs> and we were we used to scrap content from all these websites and they would just like tell Amazon, these guys are cropping, like, and would change servers all the time, you know, like we had to do like all these things. Um, and, and we made a mistake because we we're doing good, we we're doing well. Uh, we had zero revenue, but we we're doing real well in terms of users. We got to, I know, in a couple of months, we got to 750,000 users, which was for, like pretty well. We had like 20,000 daily active users. It was at the moment, it was okay. Um, so our Investors, the angels that had invested, wanted to follow on and invest again. And one of our investors was uh, Wilson Sonsini, the, the law firm, right? Mm-hmm. The law firm, yeah. So Steve yep. Buckner, the CEO, yep. Yep. which is an amazing guy. I'm, I'm a client, I, oh, but I, I haven't met Steve. Well, yes. Steve is amazing. When he sees we're doing that this well, he tells us like, okay, you should go and see Sequoia, Axel, Kleiner. No, the rock stars at the moment. And what we, our mistake was that instead of getting the money and going later to them, we said, okay, we don't want your money. We'll go for these guys and, and see what happens. And what, what guys? Sorry, met, I like, guess I missed we it. We met so. like, I don't know, Roloff from Sequoia, Samir Gandhi from yeah. Axel, all these guys. Yeah. And we were sure we'd close the round. But the consumer at the moment was going down. Our metrics weren't as good as they were supposed to. Um, 